when we focus solely on Carolina, and you were going to say they, they really lost the game because of this. We mentioned the turnovers, but it was more than just the turnovers. We had some drops. We had a lot of issues with this offense. Yeah, they lost because I don't feel like the support cast showed up and played well. I don't feel like Cam's guys showed up and gave him an A-level performance, which is what you need to win the championship game. Cam didn't play his best game, and I will be the first one to say that that wasn't the cleanest or sharpest game that I saw from him. But I will say the drops, the fumbles, the pre-snap penalties, and then the lack of pass protection prevented him from really playing at his best. And when you think about the Carolina Panthers and the way that they had been able to win and to get to this point with a 17-1 and record, they had been able to do it because they dominated the turnover battle, number one, in the giveaway takeaway margin. They did a great job of starting fast, outscoring more points than anybody else in the first half. Being able to play with the lead allowed their defense to really play after the ball. And in this game, they fell, fell behind early, and they never were able to dig themselves out of that hole, and it prevented them to play the kind of style of play that they like to play. There were a couple plays here that were really indicative of, of the whole day for the Carolina Panthers, and I know we're going to get to uh, to Ted Ginn's drop, which ended up being an interception here in just a second, let you break that down, Buck. But before we get there, there was another play earlier on in this game. Ted Ginn catches a, a, a dig route and ends up turning up the field, and I don't know why this bothered me as much as it did, but this is the Super Bowl, okay? This is it. You've got one shot at this thing. <laughs> and he turns it up the left sideline and just kind of cruises out of bounds. I, look, it wasn't going to get that many more yards. Maybe he left three or four yards on the field. But I, it, to me, it was just like, man, those are precious yards in this game. you got to fight for every single inch. And he just kind of voluntarily went out of bounds. I think he did it another time as well. And you look at the ball on the ground. We can talk about Cam not going forward. And another time you saw Ted Ginn not really get down there soon enough. And Trevathan ends up diving on the football it just seemed to me like just from an effort standpoint I was a little bit disappointed from Carolina yeah I mean I think a couple of different things showed up in that game in the, the the biggest game you have to play your best and it has to be that urgency that this is the last game that we're playing this is for it all you kind of have to empty the bucket as we say and so I did make notice of of what Ted again Ted again kind of scooting out of bounds and on that big play that you allude to in particular I think it was a 43 yard game yeah I wanted to see him test Try to cut back, make, yeah. Because if he cuts back with his speed, I want to see him just try and test him and see if he could get it done. But when it comes to Ted again, the bad Ted again also showed up, not being able to catch the ball <laughs> on this play, on this dig route, not being able to snatch the ball, not being able to pluck it, really led to a turnover, a critical turnover because in the third quarter, the Carolina Panthers were moving the ball down the field. They had the ball in scoring range twice. They missed a field goal, didn't cash in here. I felt like the game – now, I don't want to say the momentum changed, but I think they missed on some great opportunities. And because of that, they found themselves on the short end of the stick at the end of the day. Now, you look at the numbers from the game here. For the Panther wide receivers, only 12 receptions on 28 targets. Obviously, no touchdowns. Had two drops, which I think you could probably add a couple more onto that to that Absolutely. number. Uh, a couple balls got kind of poked out, those 50-50 balls they had a shot at, didn't come down with it. Uh, but, man, I just – to me, there were a lot of issues with this Panthers team. I thought even offensively, if they could have got some design quarterback runs early in the game, let Cam take some shots, get some of those jitters out. You saw the first throw of the game. He, he was a little bit too amped up. The ball got away from him. Then he has a seam route a little bit uh, later on in the early portion of the game. He airmails it. It would have been a big gainer there as well. I just felt like he never got his sea legs under him. It took him a long time to get comfortable. It's funny that you pointed to that because I, I think I tweeted out uh, I'm curious to see how many times Mike Shula has Cam run within the first 15 plays in that opening script. You being a former quarterback, you understand sometimes you want to get that first shot out the way. Mm -hmm. You want to get hit a little bit so you can kind of settle in and get into the, the groove of the game. The drive that it had that resulted in a touchdown, Cam Newton ran – two or three times on that drive, I felt like it kind of gave him some juice, gave him some confidence, put him in his mojo, gave, gave him some rhythm. I know that, you know, like sometimes athletic quarterbacks have a thing where they want to prove. This is the play that you talk about. Him Just run out of bounds. bounds. Yeah. He never tested 21. Yeah. He never tested a keep to leave to see if he can make that tackle. I felt like with Cam Newton, going back to the point, 
running the ball early, design quarterback runs, put them on the edge, let them just kind of get into the game. Even if it's not successful, let them take a hit so he can get into it. They didn't do that, and I felt like he was always struggling to find his rhythm throughout the game. Yeah, their running attack overall I thought was disappointing when you look at the performance they got from the running back position. You saw the Broncos really mix up what they were doing. You saw some aggressive fronts. There was a lot of double safety blitz in this in this game. You know, they had their success rushing four, but then they would dial it up and get really aggressive, just completely eliminated uh, that rush attack for Carolina. To me, one of the things they did different than what Seattle had done is Seattle was trying to sit and read and sort and try and figure out what the ball was. Denver and Wade Phillips said, we're just coming. We're coming downhill, and we're going to attack the line of scrimmage. We're going to fill gaps, and we're going to close space. So all this misdirection stuff didn't work. You know, um, and going back, some of this is watching the college game, but some of it is coaching in high school ball. When you think about zone read systems, the things that normally trouble teams that run read option is man-to-man and being able to put five near the line of scrimmage or a seven-man box versus one back sets. I saw the Denver Broncos – play a lot of man-to-man because what it does, it, it takes the RPO game away. Yep. We talked about Marcus Mariota and some of the other young quarterbacks that like to stick the ball in the belly of the running back and read the reaction of the defense before pulling it out to throw. Carolina was a team that lived in that world a lot. You saw them hit a lot of uh, the deep slants and the quick uh, inside breaking Real routes. Replacement that, routes, yeah. They came off of that. By playing man-to-man, the Broncos took away that, and that was a big part of their offense. In addition, they played some five-man fronts that kind of – took away all the gaps, didn't give them those creases in the run game. And because they had some success a little bit, Mike Tober had a big run on an inside zone read, but then he fumbled. Mm -hmm. So they never could get back to doing what really was a staple of their offense. I credit Wade Phillips for really setting up a game plan that took away what the Panthers wanted to do. And also his deployment of – a keep to leave on Greg Olson in critical situations. Smart. Really forced him to throw the ball outside, and I believe they felt like they had an advantageous matchup with their corners going against Ginn and Philly Brown while he was in the game. And not going to spend much time talking about the Broncos' offense going up against the Panthers' defense. Panthers' defense gave a championship One. performance. They gave, did a great job. Gave them a chance to win. Uh, it, turnovers twice they penetrated the red zone held him to six points yep. and so for me if I'm a defense coordinator I feel like that's a win we forced him to kick rather than giving up to seven I kept waiting for the offense to match them I kept waiting for the Carolina Panthers offense to kind of give the defense some life they never could string it together part of it is because the Denver Broncos played great on defense and to me Von Miller is the story of the game and when you watch him in this game Buck I think we have a, a clip here of of his spin move and he wins so many times outside he has that little hesitation move and and then all of a sudden he has you set up. You're going to overset, and he's going to spin inside right here. And it is it is nasty how quick and how explosive he is. On this one, doesn't even need to finish with the sack. Derek Wolf gets the cleanup job. But on this play, Buck, we were talking about this a little bit off air, they have Tolbert lined up outside. And I got to believe part of the game plan was, okay, we're going to chip, we're going to give, knock him off, take away the outside. Got to help your tackle out. You do not want Remmers, Mike Remmers, going one-on-one with Von Miller on a consistent basis. There were three, at least three times where Von Miller got pressures and sacks when he had Tolbert out there who did not lay a glove on him. So that, to me, that that from a coaching standpoint, you accounted for it. That's that's just not executing the game plan. No, they didn't execute the game plan. And give the Broncos credit. Not only did their tactics of being able to bring four- and five-man rushes work, but they also were able to what we call green dog. Green dog is when you line up in man-to-man. If your guy stays in and block, you then rush to the quarterback through that guy. And what it does is it adds another blocker. It prevents team from double-teaming and pass protection and doing it. But when you green dog, when you drop Von Miller in covers like they did on that play, it makes it tough. This was a game where they lined up and said, Carolina, your guys on the outside are going to have to win against one-on-one and they couldn't do it. It's one of the biggest things that we worried about with Carolina throughout the season. Without a true number one receiver, could those guys get it done? And in the biggest game of the year, the warts finally showed up for the Carolina Panthers. They didn't have a classic number one to be able to win against one-on-one situations. And because of that, Cam Newton that offense struggled. 